Hi, I'm Zachary, and this is Neos. I'm going to show you how I built a sort of a mini game uh, that was taken from A Tale in the Desert, uh, link down below for that, uh, and how I built it completely in Neos. So let's take a look at the game first. Okay, so let me spawn out uh, the mini game for my inventory. Okay, so we can see that it's this uh, planter sort of thing. Um, and then a plant sort of appeared. Now this is flax, um, and the idea is that you want to grab some flax or make some flax. Now a weed just appeared, and I'm just going to leave it there. And then uh, something else appeared, um, the seed. And if I grab the seed, it goes one flax seed. Clearly I'm on the, the wrong side to view that message. And then another seed appears and I can grab it and it says plus one flax seed. So the idea um, behind this is you would plant one of these seeds and you would get one of these planters. Um, the plant would appear, the weeds would appear, and then uh, you could get some seeds from the plant. And that way you could actually create more planters to get more flax seeds. Um, and what's left uh, at the end is just a flax seed. And then you can pick it up and you get plus one flax seed. Now, let me also show you uh, what happens when I, when I do pick the weed. Okay, so here again, let me see if I can get to the correct side. Okay, so here is the flax plant, and then the weed is going to appear, like here. So I can grab the weed and pull it, and it disappears. Now, you would wait some amount of time, and the weed appears again. So I'm going to pull it again, and then... Okay, so what this actually is... Um, uh, ignore that tool in the background here. Um, what this is, what this represents is sort of a bundle of harvested flax. Um, and if we look at uh, an image uh, from the actual uh, Tale in the Desert game, this is not exactly flax. This is what a bundle of stuff looks like. I think this is straw. And I think the flax has a sort of a bluish color. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much that. So that's the game. Um, I thought it was interesting because it was pretty self-contained, uh, aside from an inventory system, which I didn't bother to uh, implement, uh, but it was all built in Neos. So let's take a look how we can do that. Okay, so I thought that I would start with something relatively simple. So let's go into Smooth POV so you can see what I'm seeing. This is my uh, video capture device, and this is the thing that we want to try to reproduce. So I said earlier that this was kind of a, a bundle of stuff. Uh, this represents straw in the game. Uh, we can use a different color, something, something blue. Okay, so um, let's reproduce this. Uh, it kind of looks like uh, some cones. So if we open up um, the inventory, and we go into Essential Tools and grab the Dev Tooltip. Okay. And let us create a new 3D model. So these are all basically the, uh, the solids that we can create. So there's box, capsule, and so on. Um, so there's cone. So let's create a cone. All right. So it has created just this gray cone. Uh, that's fine to start with. Um, so what we're going to do is let's start with the bottom. So I'm going to uh, secondary select and then, oops, and then open the inspector. So here's the cone, here's the cone mesh. So we can specify the height, the radius at the base, the radius at the top, and the number of sides. Um, so let's, uh, let's see. So this is going to be fairly small. So let's start with a height of 0.1. Um, and let's change the 
base to like 0.1. Okay, uh, this is probably too small. So let's go ahead and change the radius base to 0.2 and the height to something like 0.2. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess that's okay. Um, so the next thing that I wanna do is, um, this is kind of a boring uh, thing, boring color. It's just gray. So what I want to do is I want to change the material. Now, right now, um, the material is just this generic PBS metallic. So if I look at it, there's basically nothing. So what I'm going to do is open up the inventory and go to Neos Essentials and to Materials. Now, this material over here, it kind of looks like the rind of a watermelon. Um, I don't think we have watermelon in here uh, somewhere. Um, and I'm not sure that I want to use watermelon. I want to use, I don't know, just something that's reminiscent of straw. Um, so let's try bark is usually my go-to for sort of linear features. Um, let's try, oh, I don't know. Let's try this material. Okay, so there's my material. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the material in one hand and I'm going to click on the material in the mesh render with the other. Okay, and that's what we end up with. Um, for now, that's fine. It's just something that I want to uh, be able to see better against the background uh, rather than gray. Um, eventually, I will change this, but for now, let's just keep it like that. Okay, so next we need uh, the other part, um, the other part of the bottom. So it's another cube. Uh, it's another cone. So let's create a new, actually, let's do this. So I have this root cone here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the up arrow, which will create a parent, and I'm going to rename it bundle. Okay, so that way we're a little organized. Now with the cone, um, because I want it to have basically the same material, I can just make a copy of this with the uh, square, with the green square. That creates a copy of the cone. Now I'm going to click on the copy, and I'm just going to rotate it, let's see. So the red arrow is X, so I'm gonna rotate it 180 around the X axis. Okay, and there it is. And I can move it up and down by grabbing the green arrow. So basically what I want is this to be roughly, my, roughly half my height, because uh, I want the bundle to be approximately my height. So that's that. Um, the base, should be the same as the, the bottom. Uh, so I just need to extend the height. So let's call it, I don't know, is it 0.5? More, uh, 0.8? More, how about just one? Well, it definitely needs to be more than that. Um, actually, oh yeah, right. Um, so it extends the height both top and bottom. So I can bring this down, maybe like this. Okay, so that's wrong. So the bottom needs to be fatter. So um, in order to do that, first of all, I can change the top radius to something like 0.2. Well, that's no good. How about 0.05? Okay, that's certainly getting closer. 0.07? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so um, one of the... One of the issues, though, is that it's, if you look, it's extending down below the base, which I don't really want. So I'm going to change the height again to say 0.8. Now let me, um, so, okay, so here is, okay, I still see it below, so let's change it to maybe 0.7, and then raise it up a bit. Okay, uh, let me change the top radius again to something like 0.1. 
Okay, yeah, this is this is looking uh, a little closer to the proportions that I want. Um, although the bottom now looks a little, uh, it, it doesn't look so great. So let me go to the bottom. So, and this is, you know, this is a lot of uh, working in Neos is just, you know, trying different things, seeing what looks nice. So let's see. Um, the top radius, let's change the top radius to 0.1. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Okay, it, yeah, I think this is pretty good. Um, let's just leave it like that. Okay, let's check the bottom side. Doesn't look like anything's going through, so I think that's pretty good. Now, the other problem is that, I, the other problem that I want to solve, let me deselect all, uh, is I want to grab this as a unit, right? So if I currently grab one of the items, well, that's no good. So let me undo the grab. So what I'm going to do is on the cones themselves, there is a grabbable, and I'm just going to delete the grabbable, and also on the other one. Okay, so now the problem is that I can't grab it at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the bundle, I'm going to attach a component. Uh, this is transform interaction grabbable. Okay, and now um, I should be able to grab the entire thing, but I'm not. Why is that? Um, why am I not able to grab any of this? Is it because of the collider? Is it because I have no collider? Oh, wait, there we go. Okay, uh, maybe it's because I have the selected. Yeah, okay, that's right. It, it was trying to grab the, the arrows because I have the, the dev tool tip right, right here. So there we go. I can place it on the ground just like that. Great, okay, so the next thing is um, we need to... Um, flip the shape basically. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. Should I rename this? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click the yellow star. This will create a new child and I'm just going to call this half. And then I'm going to take the cone, grab it into the half, and take this cone, grab it into the half. And now I can duplicate the half, duplicate, and then go to the duplicate and rotate it around the x-axis 180 degrees and move it up. Something like that. I think that's pretty close. Um, I can probably fine tune it by typing in the numbers themselves, okay? So there we go, it is uh, about my height. Um, the bark doesn't look so great. Um, and I'm not entirely certain that uh, the, the short cones look okay. Um, I think I'll just leave it. It doesn't have to be exact to this picture. Um, I feel that this is just fine. So let me see if I can find uh, a better material. So let me deselect and let's go to uh, materials again. Uh, let's try say this one. Okay, so we'll go into cone and then we will Okay, so that altered the top one. Um, it still doesn't look so great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the other cone and do this as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with the material. So I'm going to open it up and we're going to change the texture scale. So right now you can see uh, the texture is sort of, I don't know, knobbly or something. So let's change the texture scale to 0.5 and see what effect that has. Okay, so that sort of expanded it. Let's change it to 2. 
Okay, this is looking a little more linear, so let's change it to 5. This is looking very linear. 7, 8, okay. So let's go with 8. Um, let's change the Y to, let's go down first. Okay, that just makes it a little blurry. Uh, let's change it to 2. No. Okay, so I'll, I'll stick with 1. Good enough. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to change the color. So let's see what happens when I change the color. All right. So I'm just changing the color. Um, we want it to be somewhat, I don't know, blue, blue-ish. Sure, that looks okay. Okay. So that's kind of the effect that I'm going for. Um, I, I really don't like these, um, these uh, blotches. Let me just see if I can get rid of them by changing the texture scale again to maybe 10, 15. No, I mean, it, it's basically just expanding and contracting this way. So obviously what I need to do is change the Y. Let's try two, no. Go down 0.5. Um, yeah, that's just not looking very great. I can change the texture offset because I think what's happening is the uh, the blotches are on one side. So if I change this to like 0.5, yeah, that yeah, that just doesn't work. Okay, so I can maybe find something else. So let's try uh, instead of bark. Let's go with um, what. Wood. Okay. Um, shall we try this material? Let's see how this works. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up. Texture scale 10. Yeah, this this looks even worse. Let's not do that. Let's try what? Wood siding? Okay, this has linear features. Let's try um, this one and see what it looks like. Okay, that's actually uh, the wrong orientation, but let's see if we can fix that. Um, can we fix that? Can we fix the orientation of the material? Um, it's not obvious to me how to do that, unfortunately. So now, obviously, if, if, I, if I knew anything about Blender, I could probably figure this out, but I know nothing about Blender. So that is a non-starter. Let's see. Shingles. No.
Okay, um, let's try this kind of um, not exactly rough bark. So what's this? Bark number one and bark number four. So I think I tried like bark number, I don't know. What did I try? Bark number four. Let's try bark number one. Or even bark, no. Yeah, let's try bark number one and see what happens. So we'll go to this cone and we'll go to the material. Okay, this does look nice and linear. Okay, I think there's some hope here. So let's change the texture scale here to something like 10. Oh, this is looking good. Uh, let's change the Y to something like, I don't know, 0.5. Yeah, that's that's looking nice and linear and straight. Um, let's uh, also change the uh, metallic. I don't know what that does. Smoothness, again, I don't really know what that does. Um, there's the height map. If we change this to 0.1, that kind of makes it, I don't know, heightier. So you see how it sort of has this kind of, well, maybe you can't see it, but um, in 3D it does sort of have this um, effect that um, uh, these are actual, like, stalks of something. So let's keep it like that. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So now we have this orb, which is the material. So let me get rid of this. So now what I can do is I can go to the Neos tools and I can go to the material gun. That's the mesh tip, material tip. Okay, so let me equip this tool and grab the material orb and stick it in the tool. And now I can just point it at these four items and it applies the materials. So now I can dequip and get rid of that. Okay, so there's that. Um, oh, and unfortunately I didn't color it properly. So let's go ahead and pull this out again. Um, let's see if we can, um, do I have a material orb left? Let me undo grab objects, undo grab. Let me just undo until, there we go. Okay. So now I should have the material back. Um, what I'm going to do is change the albedo color to something bluish. Sure, that's kind of the color that I'm going for. Okay. Um, that's right, I changed it on one material and because the objects share the same material, uh, all of them change at once. So I didn't actually need this material ball. Okay, um, and let me go ahead and deselect and take a look at my creation. There it is, that is my flax bundle. But there's still something missing and that is these ropes. Okay, so these are ropes that are sort of tying the bundle together. Well, uh, a rope, um, a circular rope is nothing but a torus, and we know we have that. So let's go ahead and create a new 3D model, a torus. There is our torus. Let me stick it roughly there. So um, let me double select it and open the inspector, grab the torus and stick it in the bundle. And then I can just call it rope. Rope. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to size it correctly. Um, so first of all, uh, I do want it centered along the axis. Um, so if we look at uh, the bundle, the bundle is wherever it is. So, you know, I can grab it, I can move it around. The, the, the pieces of the bundle, you can see, are basically at zero, zero. Um, this one is not at zero, zero. In fact, I can change these numbers to zero. So this is the y-axis, so that's just the offset. Um, so that's relative to the parent. So the parent can move around, but the individual pieces relative to the parent don't move. So 
um, the, the y-axis is this way, so the x and the z-axis is along this plane right here. So I can go to the rope, right, and I can change the x to 0 and the z to 0, and now it's perfectly centered. Um, I would just have to eyeball the y-axis, so let's go ahead and go to the parameters. We have major radius and minor radius. So the major radius is the radius of the, um, of the band itself, and the minor radius is basically the thickness of the hose or the rope. Um, so first I'm going to change the minor radius to something that's more rope-like. Yeah, that looks good. Um, and now I'm going to change the major radius to something that is closer to this cone. 0.1. Does that look good? Um, it, yeah, it could be a little bit bigger. So let me go ahead and make it, I don't know, 0.11. Sure, that looks great. That looks good, okay. I can probably stand to move it up in the y-axis just a tad. So let's try, I don't know, 1.35, no, that's too much. 1.32, that looks perfect to me. Okay, so that's the rope holding the top together. Uh, I think it could stand to be just a little bigger. So let me change the major radius to 0.12. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, so now uh, we want to paint it with some material because gray is kind of stupid and ugly. Uh, obviously, we want a rope. So let us go ahead and open up the Neos Essentials and go to materials, and we have rope here. So we've got our choices of a bunch of rope. Uh, this one, rope number two, looks a little steel. Uh, this one is quite bright. Uh, this one is probably what I should be going for, so let's open that up, grab it, and point at the material. Okay. Um, I think it's... Uh, I think it's okay. Um, you can see by the striations that maybe we could stand to maybe change the texture scale. So let's see what the effect of X2 is. That's better. How about three? That's even better. What about four? That's a little too much maybe. I don't know. That looks fine. Okay, um, do I want to change the coloration? Well, let's take a look. Um, oops, can I color it something else? I mean, it's pretty dark as it is. Um, so adding a color is not really going to do a whole lot, which kind of means that, you know, maybe I should have gone with uh, the, the brighter color, but uh, this is okay. That's fine. Okay. So that's the rope. Now what I want to do is I want to duplicate the rope and put it at the bottom. So I don't need this orb. I don't need the material. So let's duplicate the rope. And we're just going to grab the arrow and move it down to something roughly like that. And let's see where it ended up. So let's put the zeros back in here. Uh, the reason that, that the X and the Z and the scale are not exact, you can reset the scale to just one, 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 is because of floating point issues. Um, and I understand that maybe we're gonna go to doubles instead of single precision floats. Um, in practice, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, that looks pretty good. Let me now t uh, deselect. Let me dequip this tool. And now I'm just going to grab this and take a look at the rope on the bottom. It looks pretty good to me. So there's our flax bundle. Now you can see that there's this sort of overlap over here. I could probably, um, you know what? I'm going to take this rope. Which rope is this? Okay, this rope is the rope on the bottom. And I'm going to put that, 
Let's rename this bottom half. So that I know it's the bottom half and this rope is the bottom rope. I'm just going to put the bottom rope in the bottom half and the top rope in the top half. There we go. Okay, so um, the reason that I wanted to do that is that I could take the top half and just move it up slightly. So let's try 1.41. Uh, there is a tiny little gap, so let me make it 1.405. Um, I can still sort of see a little bit of overlap, 1.406. 407. Again, I'm just eyeballing it. This looks good. So, uh, so again, the reason that I put the rope in the half uh, rather than separate is so that it will move along with the top. Um, and that is that. So let me deselect all, move this down here. Okay. Now, if you look at the XYZ coordinates of the bundle as a whole, you will see that Y is at point one. Uh, and I think that is basically the half over here. Um, what you could do is you could add another parent and then um, like move the bundle, offset it so that the bottom is sitting on the ground. Um, but you know, because the ground is just gonna be zero, I guess it doesn't really matter. So that's our flax. So I'm going to now call this flax bundle. Flax bundle. Oops, I put a couple of extra spaces in there. Okay, I think my trigger is kind of trigger happy. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my inventory. Um, inventory. I'm going to make a directory and I'm just going to call it um, planter. Okay, now I'm in there. Now I'm going to take grab the flax bundle with one hand and click the plus with the other. And now I have saved my flax material, uh, my flax object. So I can spawn it out and I can spawn out as many as I want. And you will see that it appears uh, sort of right in front of me. Uh, I don't know what the criteria is for um, spawning objects. Um, if I move this way, yeah, it, it kind of spawns in the same place relative to my head where I'm looking at. Um, these kind of look like pillars, don't they? That's kind of kind of an interesting look, but Anyway, so that is putting together the flax bundle. So the next thing that we're going to tackle is the planter itself. And actually, my recollection was just a little bit different. Um, I did actually find a picture of the flask uh, item from the uh, Tale in the Desert game. So let me just show you that. So let's see, um, flax image, there it is. So that is the actual image of the flax. So you can see it's uh, even more watermelon-like. It's, it's very green. Uh, so I thought that I would try just finding a watermelon texture and sticking it on these things to see what it looked like. So. I went online and I found a texture image. So let's load that up. Um, the original texture image was like this. And of course we know that we need it vertical. So I just went into my image editing program, GIMP, and I rotated it 90 degrees to give us this. Okay, so let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and make a material for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material. 
And instead of PBS, I'm going to use, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, Shiesi, 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 Tune. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to use this. Oops, did I uh, screw that up? Yeah, okay. So here is my material. And now all I have to do is take the image and with either I can take the other hand and stick it in main texture, or I can go through main texture and click. And there is my texture right there. Um, so you can also apply a normal map, um, a metallic gloss map, an emission map. I have no idea what any of this stuff does because, again, I don't really have any, you know, 3D art uh, background, so I have no idea what this is. Um, so I'm just going to leave it like this. It's going to look a little, you know, maybe toony um, instead of 3D-ish, but eh. So let's see. Um, I'm going to bring up my inspector for one of these flax bundles. Let's see which one it is. It's uh, this one right over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, let's say, the top half. And I'm going to recolor this and see what happens. OK, as predicted, it kind of looks like a conical watermelon. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the material. And I'm going to modify the texture scale. So let's go to 10 and see what happens. Wow, that actually really looks a lot better, I think. Um, obviously, it doesn't look like it does in the original game. Um, the original game probably looks more like this. Of course, you know, now you can sort of see the, the edge when it wraps around. You can try fixing that by... Well, I don't know if you can fix that. Um, but in any case, I think I think this kind of looks like um, a bundle of, of things, you know? Even this looks better. Um, it looks like a bundle of, of colored straw. So let's just go with that. Um, how about the other texture axis, the Y? Uh, what happens if I go like 0.5? Looks interesting. I don't know. I, I guess I kind of like this better. One. What happens if I go to two? Um, that looks even more interesting. Uh, how about 1.5? Sure. Let's just let's just keep it like that. Okay. Um, now that I've done that, I've got my uh, material orb, and I can go on to all the other items and change them as well. Okay, and now that is what it looks like. Um, unfortunately, the divide between the top and the bottom half, um, you can sort of now see it. Uh, again, I don't, uh, there may be a way to fix that. Okay, uh, let's go to the cone. So you can see, let's, uh, so you can sort of see that the that really all that needs to be done is we need to rotate the bottom a little bit. Um, so we can go into the bottom half and rotate around the, I guess it's the y-axis by a tiny bit. That actually looks pretty good. So let me deselect so that we can see it. Again, it's, uh, it's not perfect. Um, we can see a little bit of a seam, but um, you know, if you go a little bit farther away, maybe you can't see it so well. So, so there's our bundle of flax. Uh, that's actually looking pretty good. Uh, I wonder what it looks like from the top. I can't really see it, so I'm going to go into fly mode, look at the top. Um, sure, I mean, they didn't do such a fantastic job with the top either. This is fine, you know, nobody's gonna really complain 
at least I sure won't. Um, so that's it. That's my material orb. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save it uh, in my inventory under planter, because why not? Save. There we go. So now I've got that, um, and I'm going to save the new flax bundle. Let me delete the old flax bundle, and there's my new flax bundle. So there we go. That is the uh, final version of the flax that I want to end up with. All right, so now that we've created the flax, uh, we're going to move on to making the planter. After we do the planter, then we will uh, look at some of the plants that appear in the planter, and then... After we put together the planter, we'll look at some of the plants that go into the planter, and then finally we'll start working in logics in order to make the actual game work. Um, so for now, let's take a look at an image of the planter. Okay, so here's my, uh, my file browser, and they called it actually a flax bed. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so it looks like um, kind of this kind of sandstone thing, bricks around the outside here. Um, there are these uh, sticks over here. So one, two, three sticks, and I assume one, two, three sticks also. There are these sort of like cross twigs, um, and then we have these uh, flax plants uh, growing up. Uh, the flax plants look kind of like these stems with these violet flowers on top. Now, um, if I knew anything about Blender, I would probably just make this as a mesh and then texture it um, using, you know, 3D art magic, um, but I have no power. Uh, so we are going to build these out of the basic primitives. Uh, so the bricks are obviously going to be um, some sort of cube. So let's go ahead and take a look at creating a 3D model a box. Okay, so here is my box. I'm going to look at it with the inspector. And once again, we can see that we've got parameters, size, and there's also UV scale. And I believe that has to do with uh, the scale of the... Um, of the texture that you put on the box. So I'm first going to size this approximately. Um, so let's see, let's just put it on the ground. And you can see that um, the grid in this sort of grid world um, is, if this is a one across, then the, the uh, the major grid is one by one, and the minor grid is 0.2 by 0.2. So that's kind of convenient. Um, so let's do that. Uh, let's change the rotation to zero, okay? So that it's not actually rotated, so that you know it's sort of aligned with these things. Um, and then for the bricks, uh, let me just take a look at this. So we need to decide how big this is, and how big this is is going to be based on how big you are. Um, it, if I look down at myself, um, you know, I'm thinking that maybe the planter could be three by three. That's a little too big. Um, how about a two by two planter? I think that's fine. So uh, if this is two units across, uh, then how big are each of these bricks? Um, so let's say one, two, that's three, that's three and a half full bricks. So um, three and a half full bricks, uh, so that would make each brick about, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know math. Um, but luckily there is a tool that you can use. Um, in my public folder, under gadgets, there's a calculator. Uh, 
Uh, it's a reverse Polish notation calculator, which means it's stack-based, so you can't just do 9 plus 9. You have to do 9 enter. That puts 9 on the stack, and then 9 plus. Um, so basically, this is 2. Let me get rid of this and equip this. Okay. So it's going to be 2 divided by uh, 3.5. So 2 enter. 3.5 divided by. So each of these bricks is 0.57. Let's just make it 0.6 to make things easy. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay, so each of these bricks is 0.6 across. So not going to mess with the scale. Um, I'm going to mess with the size of the mesh itself. So in the, let's see. So in the Z direction, we're going to make this 0.6. There we go. Um, how big are these bricks? Well, they kind of look like they are about one quarter of that. So uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.15, say. So that means in the X direction, it's going to be 0.15. Okay, so that's my brick here. And how tall are these things? Um, honestly, it, it doesn't matter too much because I can just sink this down into the ground, but uh, let's just make it also about 0.15. Okay, that is my brick. Now we need to texture the brick. Okay, so this is some sort of a sandstone looking thing. So let's see if we can find something in the Neos Essentials. See if we can find a material that is like sandstone. Is there stone? No. Is there sand? Stone? There's rock. Okay, I mean, this could be something. Uh, let's take a look at this. Rock number nine. Okay, um, it's kind of darker than, than it looks in the materials, and I think that may have something to do with the lighting. Let's take a look at this one. Um, this is kind of grayish. Um, this is also kind of grayish. Um, all right, so let's try this, and then we'll see if we can um, just sort of modify the, the results. So stick that on there, okay. So let me go ahead and pull this a little closer so that we can see it. Um, we can change the UV scale to be the same as the size. Um, so that looks, I don't know, a little better, a little smoother maybe. Let's go into the material and see if we can mess with the color. Uh, make it... Uh, I don't think we can actually make it... Oh, we can make it lighter. There we go. Give it a nice sort of sandstone-y color. Sandstone is a little more yellow, I guess. How about that? I guess that's okay. I'm not too pleased with it. Um, we can again. We can change the um, uh, we can change the texture scale. So I think I think the texture scale is different than the UV scale here. So scale UV with size sounds like what I want. I guess. Um, again, I don't really know anything about um, about three D modeling. So. Let's change this to two, three, four, I don't know, eight. I really don't know what I'm doing. 20, okay, yeah. So that sort of stretches things out. So let's make it like, uh, maybe we don't want scale UV with size. Um, and then in the Y, what's like this do? 
That's kind of interesting. I'm 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 really not happy with this. Okay, so we're not going to do that. Um, maybe we're going to go with this sort of rougher texture. This is looking hopeful. All right, let's open up the texture. Let's get rid of this ball. Okay. So um, it's interesting that it sort of shows up um, as this albedo texture here. Okay, here's an idea. Um, let's go with the, um, let's make a new material and use um, ZZ Tune and just take the texture and put it over here. Take the normal map and put it there. Um, is there like a, the equivalent of a height map? I guess not. Okay. And let's use this and put it into the brick and see what happens. Okay. See now, um, the color is not quite the same. I don't really understand why. Blend mode, multiply, transparent, alpha. Again, I, I don't know what any of this stuff does. I, I guess I can change the color to something a little more sandy. It's really hard for me to judge color. I mean, there's the color right there. So maybe what I can do is try to match the color like this. I'm getting real close. I think that's about the best I'm going to do. Um, I can also change the brightness on this to something like that. How's that? I think that's pretty reasonable for a brick. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and... I'm going to save it in my inventory. Oops, that's the legacy inventory. Uh, so planter, save that. So that's my brick texture. Okay, excellent. I have got a brick. Don't need that ball anymore. Okay, so now that I have a brick, again, as before, I'm going to create a parent and I'm going to call it, um, I don't know, let's call it the surround. Okay, that way the surround is wherever it is. And the box, um, this is the, this is the uh, zero, zero point right there. That, that little yellow dot right there, that's the zero, zero point of the, uh, of the planter. So let's um, create another box box and put it next to it. So I'm going to duplicate the box and bring it out. Okay. Now in order to sort of simulate this seam, um, I'm probably going to make these blocks a little bit smaller. So let me go and uh, delete the box that I just created. So instead of uh, X, uh, no, the blue axis is Z. So instead of Z being 0 0.6, I'm going to make it like 0.5, what? 0.56, okay? Now what I can do is I can duplicate the box. I didn't mean to do that. Let me undo that. <laughs> Take the box and duplicate, not delete. And then here, what we want to do is move it over. Um, by um, here's the position. Here's this box um, surround. Let me reset the rotation on that. There, now it's perfectly aligned. Okay. 
Um, here's the original box. I can put this at zero and zero, and let's take the Z being also zero. Okay, that puts it there. Then I can take this box and put it at zero, zero, and then the Z should be at, remember it was 0.6, So if I do that, I mean, that gap is kind of huge, isn't it? Um, so let me maybe change the gap to like, let's go to 0.59. And we'll make this 0.59 also. Okay, so I think that's probably more reasonable. Okay, cool. So uh, we've got a third one. So let me duplicate and move over. So instead of minus 0.6, it's minus 1.2. There's number three. And then we need a sort of half, half brick. Um, so I'm going to duplicate the block, duplicate the box, um, move it over, I guess, by minus, again, minus 0.6. So that brings us to minus 1.8. Okay, move my video out of the way. Um, and now we need to make this a half a brick. So instead of 0 0.59, instead of 0 0.6, it's gonna be 0 0.3. So let me change this to 0 0.3, sure. And then 0.3. So I'm changing the UV scale along with the size to ensure that the pattern sort of roughly matches. Now we can move this over a little bit. So it, it will end up roughly there with a little gap. Um, so let's make this 1.65. Is that reasonable? Sure. And then this would be zero and this would be zero. Again, the reason why they are not exactly zero is due to floating point errors. Um, which is a problem if you actually go out like, you know, 10,000 units, um, these errors will actually start adding up because um, they will multiply. Okay, um, I think that looks pretty good. So now let's, so instead of calling this a surround, let's call this a surround side. So I will want, actually this gap is not the same. I don't like that. Six, uh, two. No, six, five, six, six. Uh, six, five, five, sure, okay. I think that works works out a little better. Okay, so D deselect uh, that gap does kind of look like that gap. Okay, so this is my surround side. So again, I'm going to make a parent, and I'm going to call the parent the surround. Now I can simply duplicate the surround side and then rotate it and move it. Uh, let's see, rot. So do this. So we're gonna rotate around the green axis, which is Y by 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, maybe the other 90 degrees, right? Cause I, I want that half brick to be on that side um, so that it's not on this side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna move this roughly here, roughly here. And then I'm gonna look at these numbers and I'm gonna say, okay, uh, well, obviously Y should be zero. Um, and let me deselect and take a look at how it looks. Okay, so you may notice this effect here, right over here. This is called Z fighting. So it's when two surfaces have exactly the same Z, uh, Z height, um, well, in this case, Y height, but it's called Z fighting because traditionally Z would be the height. Um, and they are coincident, so neither surface sort of knows which one should be uh, on top. 
Um, so they end up basically kind of alternating almost randomly. So that's what you're seeing right over here. So the way we can solve that is we can simply take this block and make it smaller. So let's go ahead and grab this block. I will open an, an inspector. Okay, so now we need to make this smaller. Now, unfortunately, I can't just drag one side. Um, so the size is um, in the Z axis is probably going to be more like 0.4, maybe. It's going to be a little bigger, 0.45. A little smaller, 0.43 doesn't have to be mathematically precise is what I'm what I'm trying to trying to get at because you know this is more artistic than anything else okay I think that looks pretty good so let me deselect so that I can take a look at the oops no deselect so that I can look at the effect okay so now we can see that there is no Z fighting which is great um, we do need to move this over a little bit because you can see that there's a little bit of a a little bit of a lip there. So let's see. Close the box. Look at the surround side. So this is going to be, um, I think it's going to be in the X axis. Nope, it wasn't in the X axis. Um, maybe it was in the Z axis then. Okay. 1.7. Two five, a little more, two eight, and maybe one more, two nine, two nine five. Yeah, that looks fine. <laughs> okay, um, great. So now I just need to duplicate this side duplicate and rotate it um, by close there's the duplicate uh, continue rotating it which means that it would be at 180 yep this will go roughly here this will go over there somewhere it's probably gonna move over a bit grab my inspector and take a look at where we ended up. Deselect, take a look at it. Um, I can see a little bit of Z fighting. It may be hard to see, uh, which means I do need to move it over a bit. Let me re-zero the Y. Um, let's change this, this to 1.55. No, 1.51, 1. 1.505. 1.5055, 1.5058, good enough. And the position here, 1.94579. See how that looks. I think five. Okay, that looks good good enough now again i could probably you know have calculated the exact sizes and positions of these things but you know why bother um if i can just you know eyeball it once and it's done um okay now we're going to take this side and now okay so I think the problem is if I duplicate this, and now I wrote that, rotate this by 90, okay, and I move it over, or we can see that we're gonna run into Z fighting on the other side. So, actually it's like this. Right, is that correct? I'm not sure that's that's entirely correct. Um, 
Oh yeah, right. It's supposed to look like this, and the problem is that this block was the one that I, uh, I made smaller. So I'm going to just go ahead and adjust that block. So I'm going to open the inspector. I'm going to change its Z size to 0.45. And I'm going to move it over a little bit. It needs to be smaller, 0.42. I think it needs to be a little bigger, 0.44. Actually, how, how big was this, uh, this other block here? 0.44. 0 0.44. Okay, that's good. Um, let us go ahead and move it over a little bit. Okay, that's probably good enough. Uh, and now we can move this over slightly. Let's deselect all and take a look at the results. Okay, I can't tell if that's a gap or a Z fighting. So let me, okay, zero out the Y. Z, 0 0.216, 0 0.2168, 0 0.219, 0 0.22, 225, no, 223, 222, that looks okay. Um, and now the position, 1.275, I think that looks pretty good. That looks good. Okay, and now let's take a look over here and see what we've done. We've got a little gap, so let's uh, let's fix that by making this box just a little bit bigger. And moving it over a little bit. Re-zero. You don't have to re-zero. I just, I just like to do that. Point 0.8. Three. Oh, wrong way. 0 0.78, 7, 6, 6, 5, uh, 5. Yeah. Okay, and there is a little bit of a lip here, which means that I need to go back to this box and move it over slightly okay there's a slight bit of z fighting over here which i can probably get rid of by just adjusting the size of this slightly down Great. Okay. That is the, uh, that's the surround. Okay. Now this is something that I probably should have done. Um, and that all of these boxes are grabbable. I should have deleted the grabbable from the first box and, um, changed it. Now I believe there is in Neo's essentials, I think I could be wrong in Neo's essentials uh in tools not neos essentials essential tools um i think there's like a grabbable grabbable setter tip um and if i equip it set scalable um so what happens if i click on this that actually sets it as grabbable right so i close i remove the grabbable i click on it and that sets it as grabbable and unfortunately there's no set as ungrabbable so that doesn't uh exactly work so 
So that wasn't it. You might ask, well, can't I create a tool to do that for me? Um, and unfortunately, no, because uh, right now in Neos, we don't have uh, logics access to individual components. So, um, so the, the fact that this tool was actually able to add a grabbable component um, is because that tool was written natively uh, in Neos. Uh, so we, we don't have access to that anymore. Um, so, okay, um, we will make do by simply deleting all the grabbables. Okay, now that I've deleted all of the grabbables, like I should have done in the first place, um, I'm going to go to the surround and add a grabbable. Um, so transform interaction grabbable. Now what I can do, deselect all, I can simply grab the entire thing and put it wherever I want. Uh, so in fact, I could reset the rotation, um, I could set the Y to zero, which as you can see, it sort of sinks it in halfway. That's because the zero point of all the bricks is halfway through the bricks. So, you know, I could make this point one. Um, actually, the, the bricks were 0.15. So half of 0.15 is point, what is it? 0.075, and that would just sort of place it on the ground. Now, there is a way that you can make the ground actually a grabbing surface, um, and then when you put the planter down, it will uh, align properly uh, right onto the ground, but I'm not going to do that at this point. Um, okay, so that's our surround, um, and there is our picture of our surround. So it, uh, it looks, eh, you know, Roughly, roughly correct. Um, again, you can see that uh, the original designer sort of filled in these gaps with mortar. Um, I'm not going to bother um, because, again, that's you know that's probably too much detail for this. Um, but for now, let's work on the the soil. So how are we going to make the soil? Well, the soil, uh, it's, it's probably, um, you, you can see that the soil here was uh, 3D because uh, it sort of goes down into the, it goes down into the surface. Um, I'm not going to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box. Um, should I use one of these existing boxes? No, I'll make a completely new box. So create new 3D model box. Okay, box is gonna go roughly in the center. Um, so here's something interesting. When you've got something like, you know, when, you, when you've created something like this and you created the parent really early, uh, the zero, zero point of the surround is gonna be, um, well, where is the zero, oops, where is the zero, zero point of the surround? Um, it's roughly over there, right? So what you can do is you can create pivot at center. And what that does is it creates a parent. So now if I go up one, it says surround pivot. And if I look at that pivot, that's exactly at the center. Now, of course, it's at the center of the brick. So, um, but the point is that now I can simply say, I can simply call this surround. 
there is the calculation of the center right over there. I'm going to reset the scale. Again, I, you don't have to, but you know, it, it sort of drives me nuts when that happens. Um, so this position uh, is actually the center. And now the surround is wherever it is. So I'm just going to call this sort of surround um, offset. Because really what now that is, is it's kind of the offset of all of these bricks. So, Which means that if I take this box, let me uh, open the inspector on the box, and I make it part of the surround, and I rename it ground, get rid of this. If I rename this ground, you will see that if I reset its position and its rotation, it's now basically right in the center of the planter. That is because the ground box is relative to the surround box now. Um, reset the scale. Ugh. Okay. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is expand this to sort of fill this space. So um, the X size, let me just secondary click on this. So the X size, I can actually do this like this. So you see these um, controls that appear on the top. Unfortunately, if I get too close, they disappear. Um, but I can click on this one, which is the resize control. And you can see that I can sort of easily resize this. I can even make it go all the way, almost all the way up to the ends of the bricks, sort of like that. Don't need it so high. Okay, now I can fine tune it by looking at the actual scale. Now this is the thing, um, when you're dealing with these solids, um, you don't want to scale them because that will sort of also scale whatever texture it is. You want to play with the size. So I'm going to take this and move it to the size. Okay, and now of course it's way too big because it's, it got multiplied. Now I can reset the scale and you can see that the mesh itself. So what's happening is the mesh is procedurally generated to be this size, as opposed to procedurally generated to be 111 and then stretched by using the scale. That will also stretch whatever texture is on it, which is not what you want. Okay, let's stick a texture on it. Um, so we want a sort of um, groundish texture. Uh, so let's take a look at our Neos Essentials and see what materials we have to play with. Do we have dirt? Nope. Um, do we have ground? No, we do, we do have ground. Let's take a look at ground. What have we got? Um, yeah, I have no idea which of these is going to end up looking like dirt. Um, this one looks kind of close, ground number 23. Um, again, it, it turns out to be darker, and I don't know whether it's because of the lighting here or not. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to open up a, a um, we're going to create a new material, the tune material. I don't know why, but I seem to always go with the, the tune material. I used to always go to the PBS uh, um, metallic, but... Anyway, um, now I can open, can I open this orb? Yeah, okay, so here's the texture. I'm going to take the texture and grab it into the main texture of this. Um, I may as well take the normal map too. Um, there's the height map. So yeah, so the thing about the height map is that that's what gives it a kind of 3D, um, 3D look, but you think you think it would be a thickness map? I don't know. What we will do, let me take, deselect, let me take ground 23 and put it over here. 
this is my um, perspective ground. So I'm going to take it and put it into ground and see what it looks like. Um, okay. That was unexpected. I didn't really expect it to look like that. What happens if I take the original and put it in there? That actually looks better. I mean, it's it's dirty. I mean, not dirty in terms of dirt, but dirty in terms of like there's too much stuff in there. So let's um, let's grab something else and try it. Okay, um, that looks okay, except it looks a bit unhealthy. Um, can I get it to be browner, brownish? So again, I want to change the col. I want to attempt to change the color to something sort of dirt-like. which is brown. That's, uh, that's a little better, I think. Um, yeah, I kind of like that. So, um, let's see now. Uh, the normal scale and the height map, again, that's going to tell us like how 3D it looks. So if I change that to something like 0.5, it looks a little more bumpy, 0.4. If I change it to like 0.5, obviously it, it doesn't look like anything. So I guess 0.02 was pretty good. Just for fun, I'll just change it to 0.03. Okay, so there it is. Now you can sort of see that it does kind of fill in the gap here. Which means that maybe, maybe, in order to make it look nice, um, I can take my ground mesh and increase it a little in the, uh, the red axis, which is this axis. So three, maybe a little more, five, uh, 2.1. That's actually pretty good. Okay, um, and then in the y-axis, uh, the z-axis, it looks like it just needs a little bit of a nudge. So let me take a look. In the z-axis, so a little bit of a nudge, maybe to 2.08, 2.1, 2.1, because it's square, right? It, at least it's supposed to be square. Okay, um, that's looking pretty good. Let me deselect, deselect so that I can, oh yeah, okay, that's not good. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, that's because the uh, sizes of the bricks are not exact. I mean, I can, I can, you know, juke this a little bit over, but instead I'm just gonna cheat. And I'm going to make this 2.09. And I'm going to make this size 2.09. Look around, go around, and yeah. Okay, that's just doing a little bit of a cheat there. Okay, that is my dirt patch. So the next thing that we're going to cover are these sticks. But one thing that I do want to sort of emphasize is that while we've been doing this, we've done a lot of work, but we haven't actually saved anything. So um, if you go into session, um, you can hit save changes and that will basically save everything. If you want, you can hit uh, auto save like this um, and then change your auto save interval. That will actually just you know auto save everything. It can be a bit jarring, uh, especially if you um, um, if you're working on something and then all of a sudden there's a sort of like a hitch in the graphics um, and and or like you know some frames dropped, uh, that's just because it's saving. So um, you can do that if you don't feel safe, or you can just hit save changes and then you know then you know that you're going to get a little hitch. So that's just a little uh, a little tip. 
All right. Uh, I think the next thing that we want to do is take care of these um, these stakes here. So there, there are two sets of three. Um, there are obviously going to be cylinders, so let's go ahead and create a cylinder. Cylinder. Okay. That is a big, fat cylinder. We need to make it a thin long boy. So we're going to open the inspector, remove the grabber from it, the grabbable. <laughs> uh, okay, so where are the parameters? Right here. Height, radius, and sides. So sides, um, you see how uh, some of these sides are actually flat. Um, this is basically because you don't render perfect circles in 3D. You uh, approximate them with a number of sides. Uh, the more sides you have, the closer to a circle it is, but of course the more uh, polygons you have, which means that the harder your GPU has to run to render it. So it's always a trade-off. And personally, I don't care so much. So let's make this small. Uh, let's change the radius to 0.1. Okay, that's getting closer. Uh, let me just reset the rotation so that the axes are correctly orthogonal. Okay. Um, let's uh, reduce the radius a little more to 0.05. That's probably still too thick. Let's try 0.02. That's probably good, 0.03. Let's see what 0.03 is like. Um, and let's see, how big should this stake be? So let's drive the stake into the ground like that. Um, I'm going to say it should be just a little bigger, like 1.2. Now I can raise it up a little bit. I think, yeah, I, I guess one was okay. Sure, that looks good. Okay, so next thing we need to do is texture this. So we need something that looks like bark. So let's go ahead and pull out. Um, first of all, let me take this dirt globe. Um, eventually, I might actually want to make the dirt a little lighter because you can see that the dirt is kind of almost as light as the bricks. Um, while here I have this sort of like dark coffee, you know, rich earth sort of color. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Go to the inventory and go to my planter directory and save it. Okay, that is my dirt. Okay, so um, inventory, Neos Essentials, Neos essentials materials okay so we're looking for bark um and bark we've seen before what about wood what's wood chips nah how about just plain old wood what's this dylan sisson pack wow look at all these bits of wood huh okay uh sure Let's try this one. Okay, grab it, put it in the material, and let's deselect, deselect all, and that, uh, that looks interesting, I guess. Um, the UV scale, in X and Y, I kind of wanted it to look a little rougher. Um, let me try this material instead and see what that looks like. Okay, I mean, it's darker, but it's not particularly... Um, it's not particularly rough. Um, how about this material here? That's, um, I can't really tell. I think I kind of like the original one, this one. Okay, let's uh, open it up and see what we can do about this. Um, because we know that we can change the height scale, which makes things 
um, more depthy. So how about point one? Um, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let's change the texture scale to two. See if that does anything. Point five. Ooh, that looks nice. That's looking nice and rough. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Okay. Um, sure. That looks pretty good. I think I like that. So let's keep that. And now we need to uh, duplicate this several times. So first, I'm going to pull out, um, let me just click on this and open another inspector and go up a level. Okay, so surround, this is the entire thing. Um, we are going to take this cylinder and put it in surround and rename the cylinder as a stake. Great. Um, and here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to parent the stakes. So stake row. Because basically I'm just going to place three of them and then I'm going to duplicate that entire row and move it. So uh, that's why I want to do that. Okay, so here's my stake. Um, I want to duplicate it. So duplicate. And now here, I'm going to move it to, say, roughly, I don't know, here. Um, that should actually end up roughly in the center. Uh, so if I take the stake row and reset the position, then if I, then this stake, this middle stake actually ended up in the middle. So now I can just sort of move it over, move it up and move it this way. And then the next stake, I know that I can reset its position and now it's directly in the middle. Okay, where did, okay, let me put some nice even numbers here. So along the red axis, I want this to be 0.6. Probably too far, 0.55, sure. Okay, and along the, the z-axis, 0.5, and the y-axis is uh, wherever it is. Uh, so I want this other stake to be in line with that. So um, in the x-axis, of course, it's gonna be zero, and in the, the z-axis, it's gonna be 0.5. So the x-axis is zero, the y is, I'm gonna change that, but this is 0.5. And let's make this 0.45, and the y-axis 0.45. Okay, so that's the second stake. Now the third stake is basically gonna be the first stake reflected around um, the middle stake. So I'm just going to take this close stake duplicate it, and then change x to negative. And the reason that that works, again, is that we've defined the stake row to be at the zero, zero point, so that everything can be sort of um, relative to the center of this uh, whole patch. Okay, so that's my stake row. Um, now I'm just gonna duplicate the stake row Go up a level. And now here you can see that uh, we're gonna move this row over to something like that. Um, and I guess that looks fine. So um, the stake row is at zero, zero. So I guess the fact that these stakes are at 0.55 means that um, this stake row should probably, or this stake, I don't know, where should it end up? Minus 1.1, maybe? 
No, I think one was fine. That looks good enough. Okay. So those are our stake rows. Okay, and now if we take a look again closely, um, yeah, these stakes are actually um, kind of like a little, they're not entirely straight. Um, I suppose I could, you know, rotate some of these stakes to be a little wonky. So let's see what that looks like. So here's the stake. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to rotate it around the x-axis. So the x-axis maybe by one degree. Um, this middle one, say by, I don't know, minus one degree and in... Uh, Z maybe 0.5 degrees so that it looks a little wonky and odd um, and then this stake say I don't know 0.7 degrees and minus 0.2 degrees oops minus 0.2 degrees maybe 0.2 is too subtle how about a 1.5 Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead with the second stake. Let's go ahead with the second stake row. So here's the second stake row, and um, we're not giving it any Y rotation because then that would just be, you know, spinning the spinning the thing. So here we're going to make it. I don't know. One point six degrees, and. 0.5 degrees and then this stake um, 1.2 degrees and minus 0.6 degrees and then this final stake um, 1 and 1 okay let me get rid of this get rid of this Okay, so now they, they look, you know, a little bit wonky. Um, not quite as wonky as in this picture, but, you know, a little wonky. All right. Next, we have these thin sort of cross things, uh, cross pieces. So let's make some cross pieces. Um, they look lighter, and they are thinner, and they are also basically cylinders. So, uh, create a new cylinder. Okay, there's our cylinder. Let's open it up with the inspector and reset the rotation. Now, what we're going to want to do is flip this over 90 degrees. So, along the Z axis, that's the blue axis, 90 degrees. And now, we're going to want to change the radius. So, what was the radius of the stake? Uh, the radius of the stake was 0.03, so this is even thinner, say 0.015, that's half as thin, maybe even 0.01. Let me move this down a bit, say over here, something like that, okay. So... Um, Let's go ahead and make this cylinder a, parent, um, a child of the stake row itself. So there it is. Now if we look at the cylinder coordinates, we can see that the position along the y-axis is 0.73, which is a little unexpected. Um, I thought it would be like 0. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. This is an unfortunate consequence of um, this thing being rotated. So the axes, so now, so this green axis is not actually correct. Um, this green axis is, let's see, it's not the green axis, it's the x axis because that's the one that's closest to zero. Okay. So there we go, now it's perfectly centered. Um, I just need to make it a little bigger. So the height changed to say 1.5, it's a little too big, 1.2. Sure, 
That looks pretty good. Okay. Um, we move this a little more in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this cross piece sort of go into the wood. Um, now in the picture, you can see that there are these sort of staples. Um, I'm not going to bother with the staples. I'm just going to do this. All right. So cylinder, let's just call that cross piece. Cross piece. Okay, um, let's go ahead and texture it. So it's going to be basically the same, I think the same thing as this uh, bark, except it's going to be lighter. So um, let's go ahead and grab, um, I think it was this material, maybe. Well, we'll make do with this one. Um, let's put it in the here. Okay, let's deselect all. Now, obviously, it's um, it's not the right color. So let's open this up and try to color it. So it's going to end up being lighter. I'm not sure how to get it to be lighter though. Maybe I should just use one of these other materials. Because again, um, I think what happens is that the albedo texture has a particular color and then maybe you're just multiplying this. So um, there's a limit to what you can do. Uh, so I'll just take this sort of, that looks pretty light. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, uh, let's open up the texture. And fine tune it a bit. Um, so maybe the texture scale could stand to be changed. Let's see what happens if I change the X to 0.5. How about 0.2? That's looking a little more woody. How about 0.1? That's looking even woodier. How about 0.05? That's looking less woody. So um, I kind of like that. Uh, maybe we can change the height map to like 0 0.05, 0 0.1. five looks okay doesn't really look quite sticky um, is there anything else with like a rougher kind of a texture I mean there's th there's ma this material orb which is you know dark there's this which is somewhat lighter let's see how that works Okay, uh, let's see if we can adjust the color on this, maybe. See, I can generally get it to be darker, but um, in terms of lightness, Basically, you don't have a choice. So I'm going to ditch that and maybe take a look at this one. Oh, I like this. Okay. I like that. Okay, let's play with the texture a little bit. So let's try um, 
changing the X texture scale to 0.5. That's interesting. And the Y to 0.5, two. That's okay. I mean, unfortunately, it, it just kind of looks like a machined dowel. Um, again, if I were in Blender, you know, maybe I would make a more interesting stick, but again, I don't know anything about Blender, so, so that's that. Okay, um, let's go ahead and just destroy that. The materials are on here anyway. Uh, let's duplicate the cross piece and drop it down to about there, and duplicate the cross piece and drop it down to about there. Go up to the middle cross piece again, bring it up a little bit, and the top cross piece, bring that up a little bit. Okay, that's great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy each of these cross pieces. Um, so I'll make a copy and bring it down into the bottom. Make a copy of this, copy, bring it down into the bottom, and make a copy of the bottom one and bring it down into the bottom. Okay, and then for each cross piece, um, okay, I don't know what happened, but, um, so for each cross piece, uh, I'm going to change the, I don't know what it is, is it the Y? Let's see. No, it's the Z. So I'm going to move this cross piece to about there, that looks fine. So what did the Z end up being? 0.475. How does that look? It looks okay. I mean, it could maybe stand to be 0.48. No, 0 0.472, 0 0.47, 0 0.472. Sure, 0 0.472. I mean, I. It's it's kind of hard to place it because again these these uprights are now wonky so um, 0.472 so now I just take the other cross pieces and do the same thing 0.472 and this one is now 0.472 all right um, let's play with this by changing the rotation of X to be like one, do, no, X doesn't do anything. Um, what about Y? One degree? Yeah, that's interesting. This other cross piece, 0.5 degrees, and this other cross piece up here, I don't know, minus 1.3. Okay, same thing here. Let's take one cross piece and rotate by one. Next one by mm, 0.6, and the next one by minus one, sure. So that they look a little bit wonky and, uh, you know, sort of handmade. Okay, I think that's good. So let's deselect all and take a look at our handiwork. Um, I'm going to go into fly mode and look at it from a distance. So, I mean, it looks okay, right? Well, I'd grow vegetables in that. Okay, this one ended up being sort of inside. Um, Let me just take a look at that. It's this top one. Okay, so I suspect that I shouldn't have messed with the Y axis, but actually the Z axis. So now it looks a little better. Um, the other ones are, they're okay. They're fine. Okay, um, let's go ahead and save. Save changes. And sometimes the other thing that I like to do is just go into the inventory and maybe save the work as it is now and, you know, just give it a version number. So version zero and then grab it and hit the plus 
and there it is. There is my surround version zero. So I think, so I think the next thing that we need to discuss is how to make these plants. Um, now, in terms of plants, you don't really want to make them out of primitives because obviously there's a lot of detail in here that I'm never going to capture with primitives. Um, this is something really where you need a pre-made asset. Now, if we go into the inventory and look again at Neos Essentials um, and we look at 3D models, we can find there are, there's nature. And under nature, we can see some flowers and we can see, oh, look, there's sticks. Huh? Well, look at that. I'm going to pull out a stick. And I'm going to sort of place it over here. How do you think that would look? Well, uh, it certainly would look interesting. I mean, I could scale it. Uh, let's see, how should I scale it? Um, maybe along the X axis, make it a little thinner, like 0.2, oh, wrong axis. Um, is it the Y axis? It's both the Y and the Z axis. So that's, I think, way too thin. How about 0 0.5, 0 0.5, let's deselect. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of interesting and thin. Um, unfortunately, uh, you don't want to use the same stick because if you use the same stick, um, it's, it's going to look ridiculous. Um, I mean, it's fine, I think, if these uprights all look the same uh, because they're all, you know, pretty detailless, but this thing has details. Um, there are these other sticks that I could probably use, but in any case, um, that's not for now. What we wanted to do was look for plants. Um, I mean, there is a plant but it's not exactly what we're going for. So we want something that has like a long stalk with leaves on it. Um, and if we go for flowers, well, you know, you can see that these are basically just tulips. Um, so that's not gonna work. There's this nature asset pack, vines. And if we look at that, um, that's kind of, uh, interesting but it's more like a bunch of leaves i mean this would be great if this were like you know an overgrown thing with like you know a lot of i don't know grapes or something uh but this is a vine this doesn't really work um and what's this this is sort of like a something that would maybe overhang a brick wall so that's not great um, low poly mushrooms are useless for us. Um, we can look at grass. Uh, here's some grass. Um, these are basically cattails, um, which are extremely dark green. Um, but again, none of this really suits our purpose. The other place that we can look, oh, there's this vegetation pack. Um, and these are all trees. So, I mean, it's, it's nice that there are trees, but Again, not what we're going for. Okay, anything else uh, in here? Well, we have, um, we looked at nature, right? Yeah, so that's what that's where we came from. Um, there's open game art assets, but if we look at it, it's basically just a palm tree. So um, there's one other place that we can look, and that is the community public folders. Right now, it's only the creator jam. And Creator Jam is basically um, everybody gets together like every weekend um, or every week and just create stuff. Um, we can look at 3D models and we can see if there's anything sort of like long and stocky. Um, there's nature, uh, nature crops, 
Ultimate Nature Pack. What does that look like? Wow, that is incredibly low poly and not good. Uh, how about Nature Crops? Well, well, there's this. What does that look like? Oh, yeah, that's very low poly. Okay, not what we're going for. Great if you were making a low poly game, but, you know, maybe we're not. Um, there's also Plants, which are basically just cacti. There's Edited, whatever that is. It's another cactus. Scopia. Um, okay, I mean, that's not really anything. There's High Poly. Bushes. Okay, so... Basically, we're out of luck. So what I would do at this point is I would go to the website, sketchfab.com, um, and I would just start looking for plant models that look something like this, long and stocky with, with a leaf, with leaves on it. Um, and then I would import that, um, usually as a GLTF file. Uh, those seem to import best. So I'm just going to do that and see what we can end up with. So, plants. I went on Sketchfab and chose one. Uh, let's import it and see how it works. Okay, so we open up the file browser. And let's see, I put it in... Where did I put it in? Not plants, because that would be too smart. Not models from Sketch fab that would also be too smart it's um uh, picture frame old batteries this thing that thing basic game ready plant that's what it was okay so um now on sketch fab uh there's a lot of for pay models but there are other models that require attribution so when i do import something and i plan on putting it in my public folder i always uh type in the credits so that I can sort of um, import them into Neos as well. So let's open scene.gltf and autoscale and run import and see what happens. Okay, so it's imported. Um, it's certainly green and stocky, so I kind of like that. Now, this is a typical problem with leaves that I found. If you look at this from the top, or, you know, maybe from the bottom, um, you see the leaves, but the leaves disappear when you look at them from the bottom. And that's because uh, leaves generally use uh, dual-sided um, dual materials. So um, the way to fix this is like this. Um, what you do is you grab your... Oops... You grab your dev tool tip. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material, PBS, and instead of the usual, uh, which is PBS uh, metallic, which is somewhere in here. I don't know why I can't see it, but um, you choose PBS dual sided metallic. Okay, and then you open up the plant in the inspector and you open up the material and then you just copy over the albedo texture into the albedo texture. Ding, ding. Uh, the normal map, copy it in uh, and there's nothing else here. So I'm going to set this aside and now I'm going to take the dual sided material and put it on there. Okay, so now if we look at it, we can see that the leaves actually have a bottom. Now, um, it does look slightly different, which I guess is fine. Uh, maybe that has to do with some settings. Let's see. Um, so this one here was the original, and it's got a blend mode of cutout. Um, this one doesn't actually have a blend mode. If we do alpha handling, there's alpha blend, that kind of makes transparent leaves. And there's alpha clip, which doesn't really look any different from opaque. So that has no effect. 
Um, is there anything else that we can look at? Smoothness? I mean, it, it all looks the same. So um, there's an alpha cutoff of 0.5. And there really isn't anything else. So I think this is all that we, that we get. Okay, so there it is. There's the plant. Now, what I also like to do um, when I get stuff from Sketchfab is go up to the root, which is usually just called scene.gltf, and you're gonna see a whole bunch of roots. There's no reason for any of this. Just take the bottom uh, object, which is the actual mesh, and stick it up in the scene. If you look at small plant, there's nothing there, there's nothing there. These are just translations and rotations. So you can actually just delete all that stuff and now you're left with something much nicer. So you're left with a parent and the mesh itself uh, along with the material. So let's just call this the mesh, mesh. And the scene we will call, um, what was it? It was basic game ready plan. So I'm just gonna call it basic game ready plant. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the mesh and let's see, there is actually no grabbable on here. Uh, the grabbable is at the top, which is just fine. Um, there's this tag that says object root that tells, uh, that, that tells um, the game somewhere, I guess, that basic game ready plant is the root of an object. And I'm also going to attach a component. Um, and you should always do this if you have something that you imported that is, um, that requires attribution. For example, Creative Commons attribution. Um, you go to, where is it? Is it... Um, well, uh, is it metadata, license, okay? And then in license, you put the credit string. So it requires credit and you can export it. Um, and let's go to the credits. Okay, so you see, base, so this is basically what I typed in. So I'm just going to inspect this object and I'm gonna go down to the content and go down to the text and simply copy it into the credit string. That's it, I don't need this anymore. And that is something that I can now put in my inventory. Uh, my inventory, my private, f my public folder under plants. Okay, and now I'm just gonna grab this, hit plus, and now it's there for anybody to use. So that's nice. So now the second thing that I wanna do is, um, we can put this over here. Um, it looks pretty good, I guess. Um, it is kind of uh, big, I guess. Um, so let's see. Let me grab an inspector again. So let's see if I take the mesh and I change, uh, what's up here? Oh, okay. So here's another issue, which is that the, um, the scale of the top object is uh, not, not one, uh, which I don't really like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the mesh, which is one, 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 and I'm just gonna copy, what is it? 0 0.00818, sure, 0 0.00819. So I'm just gonna go 0 0.00819, copy those in. Now, of course it's tiny, and then I reset the scale of the top. Perfect, okay. So now I can just you know rotate it and position it however I like, and the scale is just gonna be one. So now for my particular object, what I wanna do is I wanna change the scale, reset the scale. Um, so I guess, so this is the Y axis up and down. So I want to maybe compress X and Z. Let's see what happens if I go to 0.5 in the X and 0.5 in the Z. 
Okay. Well, I mean, that's looking sort of tall and, and wispy. I think I kind of like that. Um, so you can see that there are actually uh, different, um, different sizes here of, of weed, and I think that's just down to uh, overall scaling. So if I were to take this and make a parent out of it, and I'm just going to call this basic game ready plant. Uh, so the reason that I'm doing that is, uh, unfortunately, when you make a parent, um, it transfers the scale to the parent um, and also the rotation. Let me reset the rotation. Um, so that um, the child has basically uh, a null transform. So in other words, zero position, zero rotation, and scale of one. Uh, that's not really what I wanted. Um, what I wanted was for sort of the, the basic uh, plant to have 0.5, 1, and 0.5. So let's do that. 0.5, 1, and 0.5. And then this can reset the scale. Now what I can do is I can simply scale all of these numbers by the same amount to see what happens. So for example, let's suppose I go to, um, oh, I don't know, uh, 0.8. Okay, so that just makes a smaller plant, but in the same proportions. So that's what I was talking about when I said that I wanted the scale to be applied to the child. Um, so this looks nice. Uh, I can also maybe make it like 1.2. Oops. 1.2. Okay, so that makes a, a kind of a bigger one. Um, so maybe with the, the bigger one, I also maybe want to drop the scale to like, I don't know, 0.8. You know, just to, just to make it look, I don't know, roughly, um, maybe make it look a little thinner and stragglier. I don't know. I mean, this is fine. So the point is that I want to make a bunch of these. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, I'm going to take surround V0 and I'm going to call it V1. Okay, so now when I save it to my inventory, I'll have a V0 and a V1. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, put this plant into the surround. So because I know that I'm going to have a lot of plants, um, I'm going to make a child. And I'm just going to call it flax. So this will be all of the flax. So now I'm going to take this basic game ready plant and I'm going to stick it in flax. Now I can go into flax and copy the plant. And now I can move this to like a different location. So um, why can't I move this to a different location? I'm, oops, that's okay. The ground is grabbable. That's not good. Undo grab objects. Let's go to the ground and remove the grabbable. Okay, so uh, yeah, now I can actually move the plant around. Okay, so I can put one, say, here, make a copy. Now I'm going to change the scale down to like, um, say, 1, 1, and 1. And now I'm going to move that, say, here. And now I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to move the copy out to here and over here. Okay. Maybe I'll rotate it a little bit. So, you know, give it a little bit of uh, rotation. Maybe a little more. Okay, so it doesn't look so so regular. Um, same thing with this plant. Maybe I'll do 45 here. Okay, so this is looking actually um, pretty pretty nice. Uh, let's create another small plant like uh, like that one over there. So I'm going to copy this 
and give us a teeny little 0.5 plant. Where is it? It's over there. It's so cute. Okay, let's do another one and maybe move it down over there. So um, we can see that uh, the designer uh, put some flax plants um, outside. Uh, maybe we can do that. So let's create a new one and make this like, I don't know, 0.7. Okay, and maybe move that over there, say. And let's do it again. And move this here. This is fine. Let's rotate it by fine, 56. Okay, let me deselect, deselect all, and use fly. to take a look at how my flax planter is looking. It's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. Okay. Now, one of the things that I can't show you is the uh, effect of the game, uh, the mini game when it's actually running. Um, but hopefully you saw it in the beginning, in the introduction, where the flax plants actually sort of um, fade in. Um, in the actual game, I think there are like two, la two layers of flax plants. So you get some flax plants and then you get the rest of the flax plants. Um, we're just going to have one layer because that, that just shows the principle of the thing. So if I go into the game ready plant and I go into the mesh and then I go into the material, which of course I, I have open here. Let me just close it and reopen it just in case. So what we want to do is uh, basically take the alpha from zero to one in order to have it fade in. So how do we do that? And this is the problem, I think, with the metallic map is that um, if you have an albedo color, say, let's try this. Um, so here's the alpha. Now, if I bring it down to zero, you see how nothing happens. So that's certainly not going to help. Um, same thing with the emissive color, because those are colors just on top of the albedo texture. So that just doesn't help any. Um, there's alpha handling, so there's opaque. There's alpha blend, which does make it look different, but also I think the leaves are transparent. There's alpha clip, um, which will clip, uh, I think, the albedo texture, but there's no point in doing that. I mean, you can, you can sort of see that um, at some point it disappears. Well, that's because if you look at the albedo texture itself, you can see that there's transparency over here. And I guess um, the alpha layer sort of uh, gradually blends out. Um, so you're seeing sort of part of the edge of the leaf where the alpha gets clipped. So that doesn't help. Um, and then there's, and then that's it. That's all you get. Um, so this isn't really a great shader, um, or, or uh, yeah, I guess it's a shader or material or whatever. It isn't really a great one to work on for this. So instead, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material, and I'm going to create this tune material again one of my go-to materials. Now, I'm going to copy the albedo texture to the main texture. We have a normal map, so I copy it there. That's all that we have. So this is my tune material. So let's go to, um, let's pick this front plant. Let's see if I can, I think it was the first one I put down. Yeah, so this is the, the front plant. Let me replace its material with this uh, tune material. Okay, so uh, you can sort of see that there really isn't that much of a difference. It did lighten up slightly, but now we can see what I can do with this. Uh, let me grab 
the material. What I can do with this is uh, somewhere uh, the color, I think. Is it the color? Can I take the alpha down? No, that doesn't help. Um, there is some place else that I can do. Okay, maybe it's uh, maybe it's blend mode. Multiply, additive, transparent, alpha. That doesn't really do anything. Z right on. That doesn't do anything. Cut out. Again, that doesn't do anything. And opaque. Okay, so none of these are really doing anything. So I thought that what I could do somehow is um, make this appear and disappear by using an alpha. Let me do a little bit of research and see how I can actually get this to work. Okay, so apparently the key was to turn the blend mode to alpha, Z right to on. I'm not sure what off does. Um, but then what you can do is you can um, change the alpha up and down and it fades in and out. So that's basically that. So that's how to do it. Um, so what I can do now is I can copy this material, that's uh, this one over here, to all of the other plants, all of the other meshes, and I guess I should have done this before so that all the copies would have the same um, thing, but that's okay. There are only a few of these. Okay, um, I think that's all of them. So now, if I change the material, we can see that all of them fade out and all of them fade in. So the idea is that when you first plant the, uh, the flax bed on the ground, nothing happens. After a certain amount of time, the weeds fade into the weeds, the uh, flax plants fade into existence. Isn't that cool? All right. So that's that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is find some sort of a violet looking flower to stick on the tops of these. Now, uh, I suspect what, what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to delete all of these except one of them, stick the flower on top, and that way I can scale the entire thing again. Um, so, you know, all this work was just, you know, in preparation to see how things looked. Um, I really like the way this is looking. So let's go and see if we can find a violet flower. Now, um, we probably will not find it again in Neos Essentials uh, because we looked before for plants and we didn't really find any. But let's just take another look. Nature, flowers, again, these are all tulips. Um, and, you know, if, if I could, you know, maybe I would take one of these and uh, just extract the top. But again, that would be blender work, and I don't do that. So uh, let's see. It's not going to be under mushrooms. What's under ocean? Wow. It's, um... Okay, well, it's just a shell. All right, that was fun. Uh, trees, vegetation pack, again, those are just trees. The nature assets, I think we're all low poly, um, so we don't find anything here. And we're not gonna find anything, I believe, 
uh, in any of these other things. Nope. So if we go back and we look in the um, community public folders, creator jam, uh, 3D models, nature, uh, crops, stylized trees, and ultimate nature pack, which was low poly, nature crops. Um, well, hmm. How bad does this look? I mean, yes, it's low poly, but if I shrink it down to something like this size, I don't think that's a bad thing. I really don't think that's so bad. Let's run with it. Um, it's a little on the dark side and we can fix that by using the tune shader. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's just stick it on top here. Let's open up a an inspector and look at the texture. Okay, yeah. So this is this is basically um, a mesh. It says cactus crop. Cactus crop dot fbx. There's the object root. So the root node has nothing in it. Why do we even need that? I don't know. Cactus crop. Okay, so it's basically a mesh, and this is the um, this is the material. Um, again, it's not suitable because we actually wanted to um, use something that we could fade in and out, which means the tune material. So this is just a color. So I'm going to keep that open. I'm going to make a new material, new material, oops, new materials tune. Get this ball out of the way. Great. And I'm just going to copy the numbers over. So Okay, so there's my material. I'm going to close this out, close this out, apply the material, and there. It's uh, slightly lighter, but now I can simply modify it to kind of the, the brighter, um, sort of lavenderish color, kind of like that. I like that, okay? And now, of course, if I mess with the alpha, you can see uh, that the, if I change the blend mode to alpha, um, we can see that if I change the alpha, it will fade out and fade in. Okay, so now the question is, where do I put it on the plant? So I can take the plant, uh, take this thing, and maybe stick it like right over here. Now, it is where it is because it's not parented to the plant. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, like I said, I'm going to delete, uh, like I said, I'm going to delete all of the plants. All of my hard work is gone. Okay, and now I'm just left with this uh, main plant. Um, so I can take this and stick it um, under flax. No, uh, stick it under the plant. Okay, so... Um, Let's see, the position in terms of X and Y should, I think, be zero in X and Z. Oh, that's interesting. Apparently that right there is the center of the plant. I actually wanted it 
over here. So I guess I'm just going to have to um, move it myself. Maybe a little down. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, that's unfortunate. Look at that. From the underneath. Um, from the from the other side, the leaves have no underside. I believe there is a way to fix that. I think there is a way to fix that. Uh, and the way to fix that is you go into the material and let's see, where was it? Um, I really thought that there was something somewhere that let you, um, yeah, there it is. So what you do is you, you grab the texture, you move it away, and then you press the trigger, and that gives you this thing, right? So let me do that again, just like that. And there is a, I think there's a selection um, to make it double-sided somewhere. Or maybe not. I'm pretty sure there was. Make square, flip, alpha, colored alpha, rounded alpha. Really? No? There isn't one? I could have sworn that there was. Okay, so again, I am going to have to do some research. Oh, maybe it wasn't that. It was the mesh. I think it was the mesh, right? So, because it's the mesh that's the problem. So if I go into, where's the mesh? Here it is, static mesh on mesh. So I'll drag it out. And now make dual sided. That's what I was looking for. So if I click make dual sided, now I can close this because I just made it dual sided. And now when I look, aha, the leaves have two sides. So that is very definitely um, a key to doing that. How did I learn all this? I asked on the Discord, and eventually I got some answers. Um, sometimes some people come in to help me with things when I ask, um, or when they offer, um, and that's how I learned the, uh, the tune material thing. So, um, okay, so now that I have uh, this basic game ready plant, I'm just going to call it stock. Um, so I'm just going to call it, hang on, I need to, I need to move because I'm getting close to objects in my room. Okay. How about, how about here? Great. Okay. So, um, do I need this? I don't think I do. I can get rid of this. I've got other material balls that I don't really need. Okay. So here's my plant. I'm going to rename this flax stalk. So it's a little less generic. Okay. So now I can make a copy of it, copy, and then move it somewhere like say there, and give it a little rotation. Uh, make another copy. And this time we are going to uh, scale it to one, one. So that makes it a little bit bigger. And we can even do that, right? Put it right next to the plant. Um, and give it a little, um, say, negative 15 degree twist. Okay, let's make another plant. And we'll make this one a tiny one, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And where should this one go? How about we put it right over there? And we'll give it another twist, say 10 degrees. 
uh, we'll take the same sized plant and say put it out there and give it a twist of five degrees. Um, let's, let's give it like a, a bigger twist, like minus 95 degrees. Okay, we'll make another flax stalk. Um, and this time we will scale it up to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. So it's not quite as tall. We can stick it over there and give it a 100 degree twist. And let's have one more flax stalk. Let's see how many that is, seven. Uh, let's put one over there and maybe make it like 0 0.9 by 0 0.9 by 0.9 and twist it by minus 20 and one more. So that would be eight total. Okay, let's stick this, say, over there. Let's make it a bit small. So 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and say 25 degrees. Okay. So now, if I go into the flax stalk, so we have two materials, one on the stalk itself, and one on the uh, one on the flower, and we would have to change the alphas on both of those materials simultaneously at the same rate from zero to one. Um, but that's what we will do with the logics. Um, for now, what I just wanted to do was make the the static plants um, with no game logic. So this is looking pretty good. I'll look at it from all angles. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Um, there is kind of a bare patch to, over here. Um, you know what? I don't really care all that much. Um, again, I'm just sort of putting the fundamentals down and you can, you know, fill in your own little flax patch. Okay, so that's the flax. Um, the next thing that we need to do is look at the weed. Now, the weed, um, I found something that should be useful. Uh, so let's open up my inventory and we'll go to the public folder. Again, this is something I found on Sketchfab, plants. Um, so there's this plant over here. Okay, so it's got a different kind of leaf. And if we open it up, in the inspector, and we can see it's PBS metallic. So again, we're gonna to have to replace that. So we may as well just do that now. So I'm going to create a new material, tune, Copy over the texture. Is there anything else? Nope. I mean, it does say that there's a metallic map, but of course, I don't think this has metallic. So we'll just leave it like that. Um, I don't really care about the emissive color. It's, it's very low anyway. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and apply this material to the plant and see what happens. Okay, so it's sort of lightened up. Um, I guess the centers of it um, kind of got lighter, um, and that may be due to the uh, metallic, metallic map that is actually here. You can sort of see that the metallic map has little leaves on it. Um, if I put that on the metallic gloss map, let's see what happens. <laughs> Not a whole lot. Um, so I can actually just clear that because that really didn't have much of an effect at all. Um, on the other hand, there's this metallic. Maybe I have to do this and turn up the met metallic. Well, that actually does something doesn't do a lot that I like. 
reflectivity. How about, uh, let's make it like this. Metallic. I just don't like it. I just don't like it one bit. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to clear that. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't really seem to have an effect. Um, there is a mission map. Matte cap. I have no idea what that is. Um, how about I just play with it and see what happens? Wow, that wasn't very good at all. Um, there's the occlusion map, which I don't think will be very good or do anything, apparently. How about the outline mask? Doesn't do anything. Um, I don't think any of this is going to do anything. Um, not even the normal map. There is a normal map. Huh. There's something in the normal map. Okay, I don't think that really did much. It's okay. This is fine. So let's just close this and this. Okay, so... Um, so now the thing is, let me just make sure that it is double-sided. It is. Excellent. So I don't have to apply that correction. Um, let me go up to the top. This is plant, comma, outdoor. There's the license on it. Uh, there's stem zero. Now I want to make it look weedy. So if I take this, deselect it, take it, and stick it over here, I uh, stick it over here. I want that plant not only to look different in color from these plants, but also a little sickly. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to see if I can change the color. So uh, I can sort of make it maybe a little more brown. Maybe, I mean, it's, oh, look at that. Oops, that is actually quite brown. Uh, I'm in fly mode, let me get out of fly mode. Okay, now I'm on the ground. Um, so that's actually quite brown, um, which is nice. Um, it's kind of dark, so let me see if I can lighten it up a little bit. Um, so you can lighten it up by applying this multiplier. Now, this is also emission, so if I lighten it up a lot, you can see that it practically glows. That's not what I'm going for. So I'm going for something maybe like that. And if you look at the numbers, you'll see that the numbers are actually higher than one. Um, again, I'm not really sure what that does, but yeah, this looks pretty sick. So, and sick in a bad sense. Okay, now let's go to the um, top level. Now we can see that the plant has uh, 0 0.0005. Yeah, that's just not good. So let me go and parent it. Um, let me apply the 0 0.000 blah, blah, blah. 0 0.000. Five, I think it was five. I think this was also five, and I think this was seven. And let me go here and reset the scale. Great. Okay, so now I can actually scale this. So maybe I want to stretch this in the Y. Okay, that looks kind of weedy. That's a weed, right? Oops, undo that. Okay, so the problem is that I had the grabbable on the outdoor plant and also the object root. Um, the object root should be at the root of the object. Uh, let me change grabbable and remove it. Let me call this weed. Um, and attach, I'm not going to attach a grabbable to it. Um, in fact, I should probably take the grabbable off of these flax plants too, if, um, if I had one. Yeah, I will, I will do that later. Um, so now I don't have the grabbable. Um, I should mark it with the object root, just for 
good practice. So I think that's transform tagging. No, it's just transform object root. So that marks this as the object root. So there's my weed. Um, let's go to the material and make sure that I can fade it in and out. So the blend mode has to be alpha for that to happen. And now, if I go to alpha, we can see that it fades in and out. So that's good. That's definitely what I want. So I think the idea is that um, let me take the weed and stick it in. OK, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a child and I'm just going to call it weeds. I'm going to take the weed and stick it under weeds. There we go. So now if I duplicate the weed and then move it somewhere, like say there, um, I can even make it a different size, like say, um, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 2 point, maybe 1.8. So it's slightly smaller. Um, I can duplicate the weed and maybe which one is the weed that I duplicated? Um, okay, let me deselect everything. Okay. So there's the a weed. Ah, there's another weed. Um, that's odd. Why is the center point of the weed over there? I don't know why. I have no idea why. Eh, doesn't really matter. There's a weed. There's a weed. Okay. So now I will take this weed and say move it over here. Let's move it over there. Sure. Okay. I will change the size to 1.1, 1.1, and 1.5, well, 1.9. So it's sort of slightly bigger, but I don't know, stouter or something, a little, a little tubby. Um, okay, so those are my weeds. And again, the idea is that all the weeds would, uh, their alpha would go from zero to one uh, simultaneously. Now in the game, uh, you, you will be able to grab one of these weeds. So of course it's gonna, it's gonna have to have a grabbable on it. Um, and the moment you grab it, they will disappear. And that sort of simulates picking the weeds. And you should be able to grab any of these weeds and they will, they will all go away. And that, that's sort of like the way that you pick a weed. Okay, so those are the weeds. Now the final thing is, let's deselect all. Okay, so there is my weedy uh, garden. The next thing is, how do I make a seed? Now, I have a seed here. So this is kind of a seed looking thing. Um, and the idea is that um, they would sort of grow on the plant somewhere. Um, and then you should be able to just pick it and you will get one seed. So maybe put it on all of the plants so that you can pick any one of them. And that is the equivalent of harvesting the seeds. So, um, I mean, this looks pretty good. So maybe I'll just go with it. Um, the problem is that it's not really um, straight up and down. 
So I'll probably have to rotate it. So let me go ahead and select it. Let me select this rotation thing. And now I can just sort of rotate so that this stalk is roughly straight up and down. And I think it's not quite, okay, I think that's okay. So now, uh, let me deselect it and grab it. So it would sort of appear right over there, and then you can just pick it. So that's kind of nice. So what I'll do is I'll just take the seed and add it to each of these flowers. You don't have to be here to watch that. Um, and I'll do it the same way. I will create a child. I will call these seeds. And I will take this seed go to its root, there it is. Um, I'm gonna keep the grabbable because I know I'm gonna need grabbable on it at some point. Um, and then I'm gonna simply put it under seeds. Then I'll just copy it, move it to the correct locations, maybe scale some of them. Um, and again, the alphas can, can the alphas get moved? Um, yeah, so the material on this is already a tune material. And the interesting thing is that the tune material is in the object itself as a component. And that's important. We are gonna to wanna to do that, um, except we're gonna to wanna to take this uh, material and move it out of uh, the seed and put it, say, under seeds. That way we can refer to it using logics and then move the alpha up and down. Um, so it would be a kind of a shared material. Um, so that is, uh, that's pretty much that for the static portion of the game. So we sort of have all the pieces that we need. So next, we're going to talk about how to write the logics to turn this into an actual game.